In this snippet, we're going to build out a snack bar with Vue, and specifically, we're going to use Vuex for this. Now, there are loads of packages that allow you to do this. You could even pull in or build your own package, but we're going to use Vuex just because we want to keep things really, really simple. If you have a Vue project already set up with Vuex, this is a really good start. And of course, you can switch this out a little bit later. So the demo for this is gonna be really, really quick. Let's go ahead and click trigger snack. And sure enough, you can see that pops down. So we're gonna cover that animation or transition that you see there within Vue as well. And we're starting this up with Tailwind, but you can pretty much use any uh, CSS framework or of course, roll the styles yourself if you want to. So with that demo done, let's go and take a look at how we build this out. Okay, so we're gonna start completely fresh here, create out a uh, fresh view project, and I'm just gonna call this view snack. So let's run through the options together if you do wanna follow along. We're gonna manually select features here, and we're gonna use Vuex here. You can, of course, bring in router if you want to see what happens when you transition to a different page. Uh, and we'll bring in our CSS preprocessors as well, but that's pretty much it. We're gonna use view three here, not that we're looking at any specific uh, view three features and we're gonna bring in SAS here. Uh, for ES linting, we'll just say with error preventing only, and we won't lint this just so it doesn't get in the way of the, the uh, video. And of course, just wait for our project to build. Okay, now that's done, let's go and into the uh, view snack directory and we'll run npm run serve to get this straight up and running. So let's just wait for that to finish. And we should see our fresh view app just here. Great. Let's just start to tidy this up a little bit and we'll pull Tailwind in if that's something that you want to use. So I'm pretty much going to get rid of all of the default here. We'll get rid of the Hello World component that ships with this and we'll also get rid of everything in here as well. Let's create out our trigger snack button on our home page. Of course, this functionality is going to work from pretty much anywhere. And let's get rid of that Hello World component as well. And in assets, let's get rid of the logo just to keep things nice and clean. So we should end up with just a really simple page here. So let's get Tailwind pulled in. And of course you can use pretty much anything. Um, with this, we're going to have to pull in the post CSS compatibility build for the project that's been built for view three. So let's go ahead and do an uninstall on these, even though we don't have Tailwind installed at the moment, because we've got po uh, post CSS pulled in. So let's go back into that view snack directory and just run that. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull in the compatibility uh, packages just here. Just while that is finishing, let's go and create in our assets directory a styles folder. Let's bring in app.css and let's grab the Tailwind base components and utilities import. All of that's on the documentation if you're just getting started with Tailwind, but that's pretty much what we're gonna do. And then over in app.view, I go ahead and tend to pull this in with a style tag. And let's just pull this up and find the source out. And we could actually self-close that. We don't necessarily need that there. And the source for this is in our assets folder, in styles and app.css. So what we should end up with this after we've created our post CSS config file, is a nice styled app. So let's go into our root directory and let's create out a post css.config.js file. And inside of here, we just wanna pull in Tailwind and our auto prefixer and export them as plugins. So the first one is our auto prefixer. And for that, we can just require in auto prefixer. And we'll do the same with Tailwind as well. And then let's go ahead and say module exports and we're going to pull in them as plugins. So we just referenced them in this array. So we've got Tailwind CSS, auto prefixer, and we should be good. Now, sometimes this does require that we just restart this. So let's go ahead and run uh, npm run serve. Okay, so that's just to do with how we've pulled this in. So let's reference the current directory instead, and we should be good. Okay, great. So let's hop back over to the browser and we should see a nicely styled Tailwind project. Great. So now that we've got that done, of course, you may have skipped that if you didn't want to use Tailwind, we can actually start to look at our snack functionality. So inside of app.main, that's where we're going to be triggering this from. And like I said, we're going to be using Vuex. So the best thing to do here would be to pull in a module for this just to keep things nice and tidy. So let's create out a snack.js file and we'll keep things really simple for now. And then we're looking at merging, uh, then we'll look at merging in config. 
So with this, we're going to set this to namespaced because we're going to be pulling it in as a module as part of our Vuex store. And for our snack state, we're just going to have snack, which will be the snack text by default set to null. And we'll only trigger this to render and show this if this is anything other than null. Okay, so let's just create out an action really quickly and we will fill the rest in in a minute. So we're just going to call this snack, but you can call it pretty much anything. Bring in the ability to commit a mutation and also then bring in the ability to uh, call this method or this action or dispatch this action with some text. So with this, we want to use a mutation in here. So let's create out our mutations to set that snack. So with this, we'll get our state in and we'll get the text that we want to set it to. And we'll just set our snack to the text. So now in here, when we call this, we can go ahead and commit set snack and set that to our text. So that's pretty much all we need to do. The last thing that we'll need is a getter. So let's define our getters out in here. And that's just gonna be the snack getter, which will return to us from our state. So if you're new to Vuex, I'll go over this in just a minute. So let's return state.snack. Okay, so what we've done, we have an action now that we can dispatch that commits a mutation to set whatever we've defined in text into our state. And then we have a getter in here that just retrieves our state for us. This is just Vuex 101 kind of stuff. So uh, if you understand this, then we're good to go. Okay, so let's go over to app.view and let's bring in the ability to map our actions because that's pretty much what we're going to need in here from Vuex. And let's get rid of our components and just to find some methods out in here. So let's map in these actions. The action is the snack action, which is just snack slash snack. Now at the moment we don't have this snack module available. So inside of our main Vuex file, we're just going to import snack from snack. And then under modules, we'll just add that in there. So we should have that now available in there to call. So let's just go over, bring up our console just to make sure we didn't do anything wrong. That looks good to me. And now we can trigger this. So let's set the href to a hash. And then we're going to say click prevent. And we're going to say, well, we could create out another method for this. So let's just say do something because that will be kind of any action, whether you are registering a user, logging them in, performing some kind of action. This is what is going to trigger it. So let's just say this snack and this is a snack. And then let's trigger that do something action just inside of there. So let's just try this out. Uh, if you've got view dev tools open, you can have a look inside of there. Uh, but let's click on that and it looks like that's all good. So now what we want to do is access the snack value to check that that is actually in there and working. So we're going to do this in a separate component. So let's create out a snack.view component. Start to create this out. That's where we're going to actually show the snack value. And let's add in our script here. And this time we're going to import our getters from Vuex so we can actually get the snack value from this that we've set in app.view via that. So for this, we're going to need a computed property. Let's spread in our getters and just make sure we spread them in properly. And that's going to be snack. And again, this will be from snack and snack. So now we can output the value of snack just to make sure that that is being set correctly. Let's click on that and we don't actually see anything. So let's just try. Oh, of course, we didn't actually pull the component in. That would really, really help. So let's import snack from our components directory and snack. And let's add our components in here like so. And then just at the top of here, let's output our snack component. Great. So let's come over. And sure enough, you can already see that that is working. But of course, this isn't good enough because when we want when we trigger a snack, we want this to eventually go. So we want this to have some kind of uh, interval or, or timeout, JavaScript timeout, to reset this value back to how it was before, which is a null. So what we do is when we commit setting the snack to that text, we then use a timeout in here to set this after a period, let's say just two seconds, to go ahead and commit this again but set the snack back to a null value. So we run our commit to set the text, we wait two seconds and we set it back to null. So what this should now do is trigger this, but then commit after a couple of seconds to get rid of that. And of course this is all reactive, so everything is being updated in our snack component to work really nicely.
Now let's style this out with some nice transitions and then we will look at potentially some options that we can pass into here just to make this a little bit more flexible because you might have different delays for different scenarios. So in terms of the actual snack itself, let's just style this out really quickly in here. And for this, what I'm going to do is have a full bar going across the entire top of the page. So let's create a fixed full width bar and we'll set the top to zero and the left to zero. And just to demo to you how that looks, let's just add, we'll add the snack. Uh, yeah, let's add the snack value in there. In fact, let's add, let's just add snack in there just so we can see this. So that's what that looks like. So of course, get rid of the blue background color. And for this, we're gonna set a flex and justify center. There are loads of different ways that you could style this up. This is just how I would prefer doing it. So inside of here, it will be the actual small snack bar. This no longer has a background color. So with this, we can now set the background to something like blue, maybe set the text to white, and let's give it this some padding on the X axis of eight, and say padding Y of two. And let's set this to rounded and large, and we'll set the text to small. So now what we should have in here is the following, great. So that just kind of sits in that invisible top bar using flex to center this. But like I said, there are loads of different ways that you can do this. So let's actually output the snack value and then let's add a if statement to this to say, well, we only wanna show this if there is actually a snack. So now when we trigger this, sure enough, that pops up and then goes again. So we've got that sorted. Okay, so with this now, we want to add a transition around this so it pops down from the top. Of course, you can do this in whatever way you want to do. I'm gonna go ahead and use native transitions within view to achieve this. So we wrap this conditional render in this transition uh, item and then we give this a name so we name our transition and i'm just going to call this snack so over in app.css now we can start to figure out how we're actually going to animate this so loads of this over on the view documentation but essentially what we want to do in here is have a snack which is the name of the transition that we've created enter active class and also a snack leave active class and what that allows us to do is add a transition in there with a duration and an easing in there as well. Now we could do this with pure CSS or if you're using Tailwind, you can use apply. So we could apply transition on this and duration 500, for example, and ease in out. But like I said, if you're using pure CSS, that's gonna look a little bit different. Okay, so let's see what that's done. Uh, let's click trigger snack and at the moment it does nothing because there is nothing on our snack just here that would make that animate there are no properties that are changing but what we can now do is say something like snack enter from and we could specifically set this to translate it uh, a negative on the y-axis to go upwards so this starts from this point and in this case we can say transform and minus translate y24 for example let's just see what that does if we just click trigger snack and you can see that pops down but then it should just disappear without any other animation that's where some of the other properties in here that we need to add in so we're going to say snack leave two so let's add that in i'm going to do pretty much the same thing here to say that when we leave this we want it to go back up again on the y-axis so let's click on trigger snack and that pops down and sure enough goes back up again. So at the moment this is kind of sitting at the top here. So of course to get rid of that, what we can do is just add a margin on the top here just to pull that down a little bit. And now when we trigger that, that's down in view and then of course pops back up again. So there we go. That's just really one way that you can create a really simple snack bar. If you're already using Vuex, I wouldn't recommend pulling in Vuex specifically for this. State management doesn't quite feel right, um, but that's how you can do it. Now, if you want to stick around to learn how you can apply some more advanced options to this, let's do that now. So at the moment, we're pretty limited because we're just passing in some text into here. We don't have really have the scope to add any more options. And with actions, when you dispatch actions, you can't add additional uh, items or parameters into this or arguments. So what we need to do is really replace the text out with an object. Uh, so we can actually pass these in. So let's call these options, for example, and let's just comment this out for now, just so we can kind of focus on this. 
and we want some default options. So maybe we could store these just at the top here. So let's go ahead and create some defaults out here. It's just going to be again an object. So we'll say time 2000. I can't think of a better way to describe how uh, the delay is on this. We could have a delay as well. So delay is how long it takes for it to actually appear. And then we could have the text in here as an option. Now what we want to do is not replace these defaults when we pass the options in, we want to merge them in instead. So I'm going to go ahead and set defaults once we do this to spreading out the defaults, but then also spreading out the options. So that will basically merge them two together and then we'll end up with something that we can use. So let's just console log on options and see what we get. Now, of course, the API for this has now changed. We're now going to have to replace this out with an object and specifically put in the text there that we want to see. So let's just check this out. So keeping open the console, uh, we can see we've got, well, just text at the moment. So let's have a look at why that is. Oh yeah, of course, we want the default. So we're going to reference the defaults here when we do that. You could do it the other way around. You could set the options in here to merging in the defaults, but we'll just stick with the defaults for now. Okay, let's click on that. And sure enough, you can see that the text has been replaced, but the time and the delay are still there. And of course, what we could do is also merge in something else. So let's set the delay here to 5000. And we should see that merged in as well when we click on that. Great. Okay, so now we want to kind of pull this together. And why don't we go ahead and implement the delay here, which is the delay it takes until this is actually shown. Okay, so let's just bring back what we have already. And instead of this, we're going to reference defaults.txt. And in fact, I think I'm actually going to change this around to options because uh, I think it makes a little bit more sense to do that merge in the defaults rather than update the defaults. So let's merge them in. And of course, this is now options.time. Let's check it out. So let's trigger that. And we should see that for a couple of seconds. And that goes back up again. Great. Okay, so let's implement the delay just to finish things off. Now, what we could do with this is delay the entire execution of the commit or the commit of the commit. So let's go and set a timeout in here and just wrap all of this into here. And of course, this isn't perfect, but it will do the job. So let's say options.delay for that. So we're delaying the overall check of this. Now we want the timeout inside of this timeout because once we uh, run this after a certain time, we then want that committed and then we want the other timeout to kick in to make this work. So let's go over to app and let's set a delay on this of a second and let's see what we get. There we go. So that delays by a second, waits for two and then disappears. So although it's not perfect, like I said before, this is a really good start. If you just want to keep things really lean and you don't want to bring an entire package in to handle this for you, with just a really simple store here, we've set this up, of course, barring these couple of additional options, just to show a really simple snack bar at the top of our page.